Okay, good morning. Uh, today I'm going to show you a really simple project. We're going to make a little shamrock using Tinkercad. Uh, this is a great starter project, so uh, let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to start by selecting a heart from our basic shapes and just dragging it onto our work plane, kind of centering it in our space. Uh, you can select a different color that you're working with. So since we're doing a shamrock, green makes sense. And I'm going to select that top box that adjusts the height. I'm going to set it to five millimeters, which is a nice thickness that I personally like. Uh, you can set it to whatever you find works for you. Okay, I'm going to just change the view so I can see what I'm doing really clearly. Now that I've got my first heart, it's about an inch wide, um, 26 millimeters. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy it using the copy feature and paste. So now I've got two. I'm going to take one of my hearts and I'm just going to drag it to the side. And I'm going to use the little rotate feature to move it um, so that the bottom of the heart is kind of pointing up towards the center of my first heart. This is going to form my second leaf on my shamrock. So I'm just kind of moving it into position. Now the easiest thing to do is to cut and paste that again. So we've got two. Then I'm going to come up here and use the flip function and just flip it horizontally. So I've got the same angle rotation. And I'm just going to kind of get that into position. I like to double check that I've got these two leaves aligned. Um, if they weren't aligned, that little button would line them up perfectly. Now I'm just going to kind of check where my overlap is because if I don't make sure that they're all overlapped nicely, we're not going to get a good welded design when we go to 3D print. So I'm just going to make sure that they're all touching and that there's some distance um, between the shapes. And when I go to group them, there we go. We've got our nice little shamrock leaf shape. But it needs a stem, right? So we're going to go ahead and add that next. I'm going to go ahead and just select the roof shape, bring it over onto my work plane. Now this shape actually makes a triangular, triangular shape up off of the flat work plane. And that's not quite what we want. We want the triangle to have a um, flat side on the work plane with the point going towards our leaves. So we're going to just kind of adjust our view a little bit and then find which of the rotate um, axes will let us actually move the triangle the way that we want. And here we're selecting one that lets us kind of move it in the Z plane. So first I tried 90 degrees. That flipped it the wrong way so that the point was facing away from the leaves. Now I could use the flip function here. Instead, I just typed in 180 and flipped it back the other way. You'll notice that it's actually sunk below the work plane, so we need to use that little black cone to drag it up equal to the work plane. And you should notice that the zero mark on the bottom means that it's nice and flat. Okay, now we're going to reshape it a little bit. We're going to make it thin and tall to kind of resemble a stem shape. Okay, and we may have to adjust this a bit. That's no problem. Drag it kind of up to our shamrock and take a look. Do we like the look of this? Do we think it, it uh, welds in nicely? Um, I do want to adjust the height so it's the same as my shamrock, which is in five millimeters again. Otherwise, you're going to get kind of a messy shape there. Um, again, I'm going to use the align tool to make sure that, that stem is centered right in the middle of my leaves. Now, this looks good, but I kind of want it to be uh, welded in a little bit better with my leaves so I get a really nice um, strong print and I don't get a stem that's going to snap off. So I just kind of resize it a little bit and again, use that align function to make sure that everything's where I want it and it is. Okay. And then I'm just going to go ahead and group. And there we go. We've got a nice little shamrock. Now from here, we can do some other things. We can add a little hole to make it a nice little necklace. So I'm just taking a cylinder and the gray striping means that this is a hole. It means it will cut out from the shape rather than add to the shape. I'm making mine a three millimeter by three millimeter um, hole. And I'm just kind of dragging that in where I think it'll work. This is what happens when you group a hole with a solid shape. Um, you'll see that when you group it, it cuts out that spot. Now I kind of want to reposition this. It's easy to undo. Um, you just ungroup 
your shapes and then you can move it around again. And you can progressively ungroup so you could go back to all those original hearts and triangles and everything. All right, so now I've got a nice little necklace, but I want to add a little something more. I want to add some text to the front of my uh, little pendant here. So I'm going to go ahead and use the text feature right here. You just drag that onto the work plane. And I'm going to leave the color red just so I can see clearly what I'm doing. Oh, I didn't select it. <laughs> select your text and type in whatever you like. I'm going to go for all caps because I think it'll just make it clearer on my pendant since it's not that large. And then I can kind of change. There's got a couple different fonts in here. So um, a sans font doesn't have like the little uh, flat shapes at the top of the letter. I like it like this. Um, you can adjust the bevel. You can adjust all kinds of different things about this text. I'm pretty much leaving it as it is. And then I'm holding down the shift key. Whoop, flipped it. Holding down the shift key and resizing it so it will fit on my pendant. Okay, again, I want to double check the height of my text. It needs to be taller than my shamrock. So here it's shorter. So I'm just going to double that. Um, so this is nice and tall. If I didn't do that, then it would just get lost in the shape. And I want raised text. So here we go. I just place it on my shamrock. I'm going to use that line feature again to make sure that it's uh, centered nicely. Quick and easy to do. And when I group it, I'll have a shape with my text on it. Now, you may not want to do text quite that raised, and you can kind of play with that. Um, you can see that that's pretty pretty raised. So you may want to adjust that on your own, but that's a basic pendant. Very simple to do, a quick print, and a nice gift for St. Patrick's Day.